Hello, Cell and Genetic Biology 230 here at Tuskegee University. This is Unit 2, Chapter 7.4, Membrane Structure and Function, and I am Dr. Chastity Bradford, and today we will talk about active transport. Active transport, just as the name implied, there is a need for energy in this transport mechanism. Active transport moves substances against their concentration gradient. And that's why there is a need for energy, because um, substances are moving against their concentration gradient. Now, active transport requires energy, and that energy is usually in the form of ATP. Okay? It's usually in the form of ATP. There is a phosphate group from ATP that's transferred to the transport protein in that and that is uh, the energy source. Now, active transport is performed by specific carrier proteins embedded in the membrane. Active transport allows cells to maintain a concentration gradients that differ from their surroundings. And one type of active transport system is the sodium potassium pump. So once again, active transport uses energy uses energy to move solutes against their gradient. To move solutes against their gradient. So typically, if you recall with passive transport, the solutes were moving down their concentration gradients from areas where there were high concentrations to areas where there were low concentrations. But in active transport, you're using an energy source. And the example of the energy source we're using is ATP. And you need this energy because you're moving solutes against their gradient from an area of low concentration to one of high concentration. And we will take a look at this in action. But first, I just want to show you these four steps that demonstrate sodium and potassium moving via active transport. So what, I, what you first notice here is that this is the lipid bilayer, the phospholipid bilayer. Okay? Your hydrophilic heads are here, and your hydrophobic tails are within the core of the membrane. Outside of the cell, extracellular fluid outside of the cell, there's a high concentration of sodium and a low concentration of potassium. Intracellularly, inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, there is a low concentration of sodium and a high concentration of potassium. So typically, you would move from high potassium to low potassium. But with active transport, this mechanism allows you to move in a, against the concentration gradient. So what we're going to look at is how potassium moves from its low concentration extracellular to high and how uh, sodium now, using active transport, instead of moving from high outside the cell to where it's low inside the cell, now sodium is going to go from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. And in this transport uh, mechanism, in this using this electrogenic pump, what happens is there is an exchange of three sodium ions for two potassium ions. So you see? that sodium binds to its uh, active site, if you will, within this transmembrane protein, okay? And powered by ATP, there is a conformational change that occurs that allows sodium to now go extracellularly, to go outside of the cell, okay? And if you recall, in this first image that sodium concentrations are higher outside the cell. So you need energy to go against the gradient. And then you see here in four, after that, after sodium goes outside of the cell, now this electrogenic pump, the conformation change has occurred, and now potassium can bind okay, to its active site within this electrogenic pump. That phosphate group is released, that's energy again being utilized, 
And now the potassium can move inside the cell, which is shown here. Now let's look at this using an animation. Okay? So what you're seeing is sodium ions are moving to their active site, side of this electrogenic pump. Energy from ATP is utilized, a conformation chain, conformational change occurs. You see the phosphate group attached to this protein. Sodium moves outside of the cell. When that happens, it opens up this active site so that now potassium can bind to its active site. Okay, You still have this phosphate group here. That energy is utilized to open the pump and allow to activate the pump. And now potassium can move inside the cell against its concentration gradient. Okay, And now sodium can then bind again using ATP. Conformation change occurs. Conformational change occurs. Sodium is released outside of the cell. Potassium can then bind to its active site utilizing ATP, or this phosphate group rather, for energy, potassium moves inside the cell. And this is how the sodium-potassium pump works. There's a three-two exchange. Three sodium ions are exchanged for two potassium ions, and they're moving against their concentration gradient. There's another mechanism of active transport, and it's called co-transport. Co-transport, or coupled transport, that occurs via membrane proteins. See a membrane protein here and a membrane protein here. Okay? Co-transport occurs when active transport of a solute dry, indirectly drives transport of another solute. An example. Is through the use of plants. They use the gradient of hydrogen to of hydrogen ions to drive active transport of nutrients into the cell. Okay, so what you notice here, once again, this is our phospholipid bilayer with the phospholipid heads that have the phosphate group. And then you have your hydrophobic core. So this is the hydrophilic heads, your hydrophobic core made of the fatty acid chains. Okay, you have your proton pump here, and this is the sucrose hydrogen ion co-transporter. So co-transporter. It's like you're getting a two-for-one deal, if you will. Okay, again, another mechanism of active transport occurs. So if it's active transport, then something is going against this gradient. And what is that? In this case, it is sucrose. So you see sucrose is higher inside the cell and lower outside the cell. So using the diffusion of hydrogen ions, they are actually going down their concentration gradient from high to low, okay? But energy is being utilized by this protein, proton pump, okay? And we're moving hydrogen ions against their gradient. Okay, so as you see here, the hydrogen ions are higher outside the cell than inside. So utilizing ATP, this protein, proton pump is pumping hydrogen ions extracellularly or outside the cell. Okay, and the sucrose hydrogen ion co-transporter is using this gradient, okay? You see now, it's using the gradient that's created by this proton pump. So now this hydrogen ion will bind to the co-transporter, as well as sucrose will bind to the co-transporter. So sucrose is, so we get a two for one. <laughs> so sucrose is kind of attaching itself or indirectly moving in, okay? So Co-transport occurs when active transport of a solute, so the active transport of hydrogen ions, 
indirectly drives transport of another. So this indirectly drives transport of sucrose. So both are going against their concentration gradient.